All right, we're back on this again. Okay, I got the chrome cover out now. Got the wiring conduit piece. That just slips in there like that. Takes out like a big turd. That's where the handlebars go though, so that's why it's cut away. Take all the nuts off of here, so that just lines up in there like that. Pulls down like that. So there's our top nuts. Those back in there where they belong. Make sure they center in the big holes there. There we go. bring those in. Okay, when I tighten, when I loosened up the um, this tree, it, same thing as before, it tilted up a little bit. So there's some definitely binding between the different components for whatever reason. So things are not happy with each other. Okay, here's our lock tab here. Put that right in there for now. And the nuts back there drying. Somebody threw some paint on it back there. I don't know who would do something like that. Probably still pretty wet. It's only been about 10 minutes. And it's winter time. It only cools so fast. And we are going to need a socket for this. So. So give me a socket real quick. Right back. All right. One breaker bar one inch and a half socket and one slightly tacky nut. And we have a rusty stem. I'll have to see if you'll put a chrome acorn up there and make it look better. Like that. It covers up all the crap inside. We'll see what he wants to do. Or we can go there with some silver paint and touch it up. At least the nut's not rusty. That was a big piece of... Didn't look very good. Tighten the nut up, it rebends the tree back to fit. Okay, now I get some torque on this. That's it, kick the camera. I've done that before and flipped it. So we got to put our foot down here against the against this, like that. And you put the hand up here and you yank on it. Up there, you get a little leverage. And you notice I got the fork against the stop, so I don't have to fight that. Okay, here's an appropriate torque. Right like that. All right. You're gonna tighten the fork back up again, see? Didn't quite fall on without the wheel weight on it. It's nice and even though it's a little Tight right there, and that's it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I think you go ahead and tighten these up here. Those are another size. I should use a damn uh, socket on those two, but I'm lazy. So we're just going to use our wrench. 
try not to screw the chrome up. That's the secret. Okay. Oh, damn. I didn't screw the chrome up. Have to work on my practice on doing that later. Okay. So now it looks like that. It looks a lot better than it did before. And I can go ahead and fold this nut up when I'm done screwing with it. If he's going to keep with this on here, I'll go ahead and fold this tab up. And then he's got to put some silver paint in there to keep that from rusting or put some kind of a plug in there. This is a factory nut. They had a, there's actually threads in here and had a, a stainless little dome cover that went down on here with two screws that held it down. I don't know if he has that cover. I haven't seen it. He might have it floating around all his other stuff. And there's supposed to be a tin cover that goes across here and tin back covers that are, appear to be missing right now. It's not in the chrome pile down here. So this is our new pile of stuff over here. And it doesn't appear to be over here in the way either. But we do need these. Brand new risers. Top cover. Oh, this crap right here. This is what goes on next. There's a brand new rubber mounted riser. Instead of being steel mounted, solid, they actually have a rubber grommet down inside the inside of here. So that's how they mount. That's how these rubber mount. That was on the high end models. On the cheaper bikes, you just have a solid mounted one. I like the solid mounted one. I don't like a bunch of crap that moves around. So, you know, we got two of those. And we got the fancy reinforcement plate that goes across the top that I don't particularly like, but whatever. That's what Harley did, and that's what the customer wants, so it doesn't matter what I don't like. It only matters what the customer wants. As long as it's safe. That does matter. I do draw my line limits at those. Now, I don't know why they don't give you a lock, but they give you a stupid lock washer and a nut. You'd think they could just break down and give you all of the good stuff, you know. Of course, you're not even watching what I'm doing. See, that's what happens when you're not watching through the viewfinder, you're watching your hands work. So, we got a regular nut and a regular lock washer instead of a lock nut on here. Trying to get the rubber to come off the bolt. There it comes. This is a cupped rubber. I'm trying to show you how it's made. And you have the rubber is up inside of here that actually does what it needs to do. I'm not sure what this one does. It supports stuff or does something. I'm not sure. Okay, so that needs to be done. Now. When you have that clamp on top, you have to have a double end of stud to hold the clamp on it. So we got double end of studs here. So the bolt just goes through here and it catches inside of here so it can't rotate very far. Except this is being made in Wang Bang Lamb. It doesn't take too much and this will twist around on you because it's so damn dead, loose. Yeah, it's not going to take much for this bolt just to twist around. It's almost its almost the point it's going to twist around. So I bet you it twists around when I go tighten it up. All right, so that goes on there. Of course you don't know where Wang Bang Land is. It's nowhere near us. Yeah, this one's the same problem. It's made the same way. What a shocker. Same long, same crappy hardware. Most of the time I just throw away the hardware this stuff comes from with it because it's crap. It's not made to very good standards. This appears to be a grade 5 bolt, so hopefully they uh, actually is a grade 5. Okay, so I need a half inch lock nut, so I'm going to get two of those real quick.
Okay, so I got two block nuts, like that. Which I like a lot better than the, the lock washer. I bet they're not. I do believe in upgrading hardware in places on these bikes. Unless you're doing a restoration. This ain't a restoration. difference between a rider bike and a restoration. Rider bikes are actually better in a lot of respects. Okay, now you have to hold the riser so you can tighten this nut down. I guess how long that's going to work until that goes above your strength in the hand. And about that far. Okay, so at this point we need to get some handlebars up in here. Step now to set. How do you like them? Nice. So a new set of brand new set of handlebars here. piece. So these are the old one piece ones. They're actually three pieces. You got this side, this side, and this piece in the middle. And these always break right through here. That's why they put this reinforcement here. They still break through there. They just a little bit longer before they break. So I need to take the nuts off of here so I can tighten these bolts up. If you tighten these up too much, they just break in half because these are crappy material. So you want to make sure you use Dray 2 hardware on your handlebars. Only the best, right? More crappy ass hardware. Look at that cheap chrome ass lock washers. You know those things are going to just, just, just shred to pieces and you put any torque on them. Okay, so we got four bolts. We'll be lucky if these go in the bike without binding up and causing problems. So we got our cap here. We got two bolts going like that. We got a handlebar. It's a great fit. Those did come out of the holes, didn't they? <laughs> she don't act like it. Oh yeah, that's that's good old. That's some good threads there. Yeah, those are. That's definitely matching hardware. Lang bang lang again. Junk. There's a reason why they were only put together with a couple threads. That's all they go in. So that means we get to take all this apart. Go do some work. Fun, fun work. Okay, so I'm going to take these. I'm going to take these and these and these and these. Take my tool with me. And we're going to go up front and do a 
do a tap job on these and see what happens. We know this is going to be good quality stuff here. So now we're going to take a nice long walk, go buy the fun good, the good bike. There's a 65. And go way up here and pretend like we know how we're doing work up in the front now. There you go. And we'll put this over here. Alright, we're going to pretend that that's 516's fine thread. That'd be my guess anyway. So you take your calipers and measure them. Yeah, it's 305, that'll be 516. Alright, so you take your take your tap. Cross cam. We're off video again. Put your assembly lube on it. Not assembly lube, don't know. Your cutting fluid. Stick it on there. I'm going to re-tap these holes. Because whoever did them before didn't, didn't do a very good job. Yeah, look at that. It's already, it's already tight. Problem is trying to hold these by my hand. It's getting hot. Okay, that bottomed out. Okay, so there's a before and after hole. one. There's the untapped one. Here's our bolt. Oh, look at that. It goes all the way in now. You don't need a breaker bar to put it in there. Unlike the other one. So now we can do that to all four of these because these things are crap. So you get your upper body strength. See when you're working out. You're working out at the Tatro gym. See, you go like this. Ah. Of course it digs into your thumb and tries to eat it up. See when you work for a living, you don't have to you don't have to go to a gym. Every day is a workout. Okay, blow this one out again. So now they're both cleaned up. I need to bring the axle or the cap with me to make sure it went on there good, but I already know it's going to go on there nice. So there you go. They fit in there just like they're supposed to now, see? Okay, I'll do the other two, get all this cleaned up, and we'll be back in the back in a few minutes. Okay, we're back again. Bolts are in there. Attempt number two. I just knew that wasn't going to work the first time. I would have actually been shocked if that actually went on. Reproduction stuff just doesn't work that good. There's no way it goes on the first time. Oops. Hard to get good help these days. Yeah, 
Yeah, on the drop too. It's pretty good. <clears throat> yeah. And we're doing a drop test, see if they hold up. If they don't break on the drop test, they must be good. All right. We'll try this again. See how far we get. Ooh, it's going in. That's a good sign. How about this one? Will it go in? Ooh, look at that. Oh, that's amazing. That's a shocker right there. Oh, well, that, I'm done with that. The amazement just ended. The socket won't fit where you need to put the wrench. Bolts not made. So, what you got is you have a riser clamp, a bolt, and you have a socket. Now, if you can tell, there's not a lot of room right there. So, you can't put the socket in the hole where the bolt goes. So, how now are you supposed to tighten that up? It's flush. Now, if I can't put this in there, how am I going to put an open end wrench in there? Or a culmination. So, so we're on attempt to fail. So now I got to take one of my nice good sockets. I'm going to, have to butcher one of them, which I don't want to do, and trim it down so it'll fit inside this stupid ass piece of crap here that's made wrong. So we're going to look in a junk box here. How am I going to cut up my good sockets? So maybe we can find some crappy ass craftsman socket or something in here. So let's go hunting in here and see what we can come up with. See, so nobody put their tools away, stack them up. Of course, I don't even know where they go. Oh, there's a place for. Look at that, I got plus for pliers and everything. Look at that. Except I'm leaving those out, I use them all the time. Where do screwdrivers go? In this drawer, in this drawer. Oh, I knew there was a screwdriver drawer. Yeah, screwdriver drawer. Yeah, there's a screwdriver in the screwdriver drawer. How about that? I saw a hammer once. That's a new drawer for that. Look at that. I can almost get in here now. Look at these. Look at that. Now, if you take the sockets and put them back in the socket drawer, now, I went ahead and reorganized all of this stuff so I could find it. Okay, this appears to be a metric socket. And I'm pretty sure I did something with metric. That's metric. What's this piece of crap? This is a wang bang socket. So we'll put that over here in the wang bang door. Okay, so now we need to find ourselves socket for this, which is probably 7 sixteenths, would be my guess. Ooh, there's one right there. Look, at, look, look how thin that one looks already. That's a good one. Let's see, we got some other one here. There we go. That's a thick one like mine. Look at the difference in those two right there. Okay, this one here is a craftsman, and this one here is a craftsman. These are both craftsmen. One old one, one new one. Let's see, here's a piece of crap Taiwan that's probably a half inch. No, oh, shit, yeah, that's probably metric. Look how loose that is. Yeah, it's a 12. Yeah, that's my good. Yeah, that's an American drawer. Let's see, what else do we got to use? Nope, that's too big. That one, that one. Okay, I got three to choose from. So, this one here is the winner. Mr. Taiwan, that's going to be the new one. Okay, so now we're going to take that. We're going to take that thing over the lathe. And we're going to make that thing so stinking thin, we're going to scare the crap out of ourselves if it's going to break or not. That's the plan. So, yeah, they really made these things nice. 
All right, so keep from making 15 trips. We're going to get a handlebar riser off the bike up here. We'll go back up here. Tempt to take one of these out of here. Look at that, it came right out. Because we need to have a sample of what we're going to do here. See, if you don't have this on here, you're not going to know what size you need. I got a pretty good idea that we're not going to be able to make much of anything work with this bike. Yeah, there uh, looks like there's about a 30 thou material to work with in there, but not this much. Okay, so we're going to take my good socket and I'm going to put it back in my tray where it belongs. Because we're not going to butcher up my good socket, we're going to butcher up some Taiwan piece of crap. Alright, so now we get to go over our lathe over here. Pretend we know what we're doing. Yeah, more good bikes again. It's even still together yet. I haven't taken apart from racing. This one's almost done. I wish. Oh, the heads fell off. I did find a new starter motor for it though. But that'll be another video. That was going to be a nice video, but it appears that the project has taken too many hours already a day. So we'll have to come back to do that later. Okay, so we're going to put this right over here. Maybe you can see what I'm doing. Probably not. So this riser goes there. Socket comes off. Close up the chuck jaws. Now don't drop the chuck jaw on the floor. Unless you want to. Obviously I wanted to because I do it all the time. Okay, so now we got the socket sitting in the lathe. I'm going to go ahead and trim the damn thing. So we could do that top of the fork and see using that file earlier too. Alright, so we're going to cut the piss out of this. Well, we need about how much? Cut number one. You notice how hard that socket's not. We're going to go ahead and face off the end of it so it's nice and flat. Well, that thing is terrible how to make that socket. Yeah, you can this, this sucks. Yeah, I know how to fix this problem. Do, 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 do. There we go. We we'll fix the problem. Okay. So, see how you got such a big chamfer right there? That the bolt head, half this bolt head will be in nothing. So we're going to face this thing off until those are gone. You can see it right there how you get that chamfer sitting there. See, that wasn't enough. Ooh, I feel a little hardness coming in. Okay, now if you look at it, you saw that little line kind of went away. Now that's the proper way the socket should be made. See, that's almost 100% what you need. Okay, now you can see how thick the socket actually is from the side. So we have a lot more meat to take off. We're going to have to take off more meat because this one's a piece of crap. Okay, so we're going to go all the way back a little bit deeper now because I cut too much off. Yeah, I gotta use only one hand, so we're gonna have to use some power here. All right, look how thick that thing is. Got a lot more material. Okay. It's getting 
thinner. We need more. Okay, that's stage one. How come that socket doesn't fit in there? Did we grab the wrong socket? <laughs> I wouldn't have done that, would I? Looks like I got the wrong socket here. I wouldn't have done that, would I? Maybe. It's not like we hurt anything, it's just piece of crap Taiwan socket. No, it's seven, seven something. Looks like it says seven sixteens. Yeah, I think it's the right size, it just doesn't fit. We'll see. No, it's the socket's the wrong size. I grabbed the wrong socket. I thought we put these all on there. It appears I cut down the wrong socket, but it's a lot thinner than it was. It's it's been customized. So that was a nice nice stunt there. So now I go back and get the correct socket. So that must be 732nd or something. So you can't read it. It's, the numbers are all gone. But I could have swore we stuck all three of them on there. But it's obvious it's not going to go. Yeah. Oh well, I screwed up. I'll go get me another socket. We'll be back. We're back. It wasn't me. There's burrs in there. I thought I had it on top of that bolt before I put it in there. Alright, oh look at that. It fits now. Now it looks even thinner. Eh? See it wasn't me. I screwed up. I screwed up. I thought I screwed up, but I didn't. Ooh, look at that. That one was right in there like it's supposed to. Look at that. Oh, look at that one. It fit too. Okay, but we have to cut a little bit deeper because I'm into the radius right here. Or the taper, I mean. See, it's too tall right here. I need to pull it back into the sixteenth of an inch. But, yeah, we're definitely, we're definitely thin enough to go in there. So I wonder how long before that thing breaks. Rest assured, we'll find out. Trim job here. Better. 
still a snug fit in there, but it fits. There we go. We have our new tool. And if we get through one or two bikes before that split splits right in half, I'll be shocked. But we're using the best socket in the world. It's a Taiwan one, so <clears throat> we want to make sure the material we use is the strongest thing available. All right. Now, can we see in the forks? I can't tell what the fork angle is because the covers are on here. Let's see if that fork is screwed up. I, I can measure the fork leg to the bottom of the frame though. That would tell me that way. There's one way, and there's always another way of measuring stuff to figure out where you're at. You'll have to watch previous videos to see what I'm talking about though. Okay, we're going to try this one more time. We're having so much fun doing this. So we're on number three attempt. Center. I'm a little bit to the left, I think, right now. Come on, get on there. Yep, that's a fit. There it goes. Stick up close enough to make it fly. Something about in that area. Oh, bolt spinning up inside the riser. Remember I told you that would probably help. Trying to figure out what the hell is going on there. Yep. Get these bolts out of here too. These are the screws that go on the side right here. Like that. And they're not supposed to be out in there. Evidently that wire was not very good. It, it, it fell off at some point. Oops. So this is going to be attempt three and a half, or we're going to call it four. Yeah. See, that's why I don't give you lock nuts, because it doesn't work very good. Let's see what's happening here. Yes. Yeah, we're definitely spinning it all. Okay, so that's officially attempt number four. I'm about to go to number four. Number three has just failed. 
now I can't get the bolt out. Oh, there we go. Got it. Left out. I found enough wedge to lift it up and screw it. All right. So, I'm going to take all this apart. See, each attempt, we have more and more stuff to undo. That socket barely fits in there. I thought I cut too much, man. Like, just barely enough. Quality merchandise has caught me again. I could blame it on the guy that sold it to him, but the problem is that was me. But it's not like you have a lot of options what to use. It's pretty much something that's available without scanning eBay for original stuff. Or antique swap meets that they have anymore. Okay, bars are off again. So what's happening right now is this bolt right here is spinning inside of that hole. that precision device in there. Okay, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to take this bolt right here and we're going to have to weld some turds on that thing so you can tighten the bolt up. So I'm thinking now I need to do two turds. Probably one's all you really need, but let's go for two. That way we know it's enough. So we have the same problem in all these. So after I make them, then I'll have to come back and grind these until they will fit inside of there. It appears that we got about a 50 thou slop on this thing in there. Very, very precision. Okay, so the welding involved. So I'm gonna go weld these up because I don't want to videotape that, and we'll come back. I'll also grind these to the edge and I'll come back out because uh, I'll have to spend a few minutes dicking around. We don't need to film everything I do. So if you don't know how to grind a bolt after you weld it, you better go watch a fabrication video. So there we go. We'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, we're back again. A couple hours later, wasted about an hour making the two bolts and customers. So there you go. Just because it's 10 o'clock at night doesn't mean I don't get customers. Okay, I took the bolts, I added some extra material on them on both sides, ground them until they fit. Did it on both sides. I also picked up some, uh, it, it kick, picks up a little bit on this hex too, as well as across the front here. And I painted them silver so they won't rust. So now they fit in here a lot tighter. So you have to figure out which one they fit into. Every hole is a little different. There. I think that's in there all the way now. Yeah, so that one's in all the way now. So we're good. So we're gonna put our rubber back on here. And back up on top again. Okay, where's the other one at? Lost it. There it is. So let's see if this one fits in this one. I ground it to fit the other one. I need to check and see if it fits this one. Ah, good, it doesn't fit this one. It, you would think they'd both be the same. No, they're not. All right. Didn't quite fit. Where's my hammer? Make it fit. A tight squeeze. 
Yeah, it's going in all the way. Oh yeah, that's in there all the way now. That's a good fit. Yeah, you can't say that one's going to be loose now. It's a beat-in fit. Let's see. Let's see if this one was in all the way too. Nope, it wasn't all the way down either. Now it is. Oh yeah, I went down another an eighth of an inch almost deeper. Okay, so both of these are nice and tight fit now. There you go. Okay, this is number four attempt. Been over three hours trying to get these handle bars on. Not sure how much that made video, but and of course the customer wasted about an hour of my time, so I guess we're going to call it two hours of my time at least. Nothing like having parts that fit right on to start. Okay. I don't know exactly what these rides are going to set just yet because they're loose. Okay. Now let's see if we can torque these down. Plastic's popping. Working down kind of evenly. Oh yeah, the plastic is definitely squishing pretty hard. I wonder if that's supposed to be yeah, if you head on the bottom, it just fall through. It's got to be like that. Okay, here, we've finally got enough things tight. Okay. Let's bring out the real torque wrench. Oh, that one's definitely tighter than this other one. Something's given on this one. Oh, that's definitely tight. Oh, yeah. Okay, one more torque just to make sure they're tight. Okay. It is a half inch bolt. I gotta tighten it. Okay, how close was that? That's pretty damn close up there. Okay, loosen it up just a little bit. I'll kind of self-center a little bit. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, they're tight. The plastic's pulling up. I'm not sure the angle of the bar is going to be at, but probably about there is about where it belongs. Maybe I'll stick up just a little bit above standard. Okay. I'm going to pull these down a little bit. Now 
you can bring the caps down equally as we're doing here. So what we're looking at right now is the distance between this side and this side. We're pulling the bar down because this plastic tube in here is being crushed. Look how, look how far that thing is smushed out on that one side. Oh, it split the damn thing wide open. It broke it. So it destroyed that one. So I don't know what the hell that's supposed to do. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to break like that. So I guess you're going to have to cut these things to fit. So I just destroyed that one tube. So. One piece of shit plastic tube broken. Okay. Uh, those are pretty tight. Let me get the back ones over here. Ah. Suck it, doesn't want to go down there. Okay, that one's tight. Tight. Okay, those are on there. So we lost one plastic tube. Like I said, I guess I'm going to have to hand shorten. It's probably about a quarter inch, it looks like, because I crushed that thing. And I haven't put one of these on in about 20 years, so there you go. This aftermarket stuff has made what it is. If you stick it through the hole in the bottom down here, can't lose. So if you come through underneath here, there's nothing to hold it up in there, so it has to be. It's between the, the plate and crap behind me. It's between this plate and the triple trees where that jams in. And then obviously the handlebar, like I said, I guess I would have just had to cut the hell out of this thing. So it's just made too long. So, oh well, it is what it is. So there's the uh, front end right there. So all these chrome covers and stuff. This looks kind of crap without a steering damper in it. But maybe I'll come up with one and put one on there. Who knows? I don't have the dash cover on here yet, but anyway, there's the stock handlebars. They actually look like they look pretty close, not too bad. So we haven't put any guts in these things yet to see if they're any good, but there you go. So I still got to work on all the headlight stuff. I get the covers on here and all that too. So I did find the, uh, one of the other cover pieces. In the headlight, so we don't have the screws for holding it all on yet. So here's our cover piece. It goes like this. There's the holes right there. So this is going to look really, really pretty because of the way they make it. And get rid of this damn camera stand. Tripod sucks. So obviously I got to work on the tins a little bit. They're kind of damaged. Okay, here's your mounting holes right here. You got that hole right there and that one up there. So this hole lines up more or less here. This one's a little bit low, so I have to make it work. So the cover basically goes right on, covers up this lip right here. Hangs down, almost covering this. And then it leaves the top triple tree exposed through here. That's why I put a chrome triple tree on it. Because on a regular bike, you can see the black tree here and then your, all your covers. It looks like crap. But that's where it goes because the screws are only right here. See, there's the screws lined up. You got a good quarter inch gap all the way across, you can see. So that's why I put that chrome tree on this bike. So I'm going to make this all fit, which is going to be a lot of fun. And then the headlight is floating around here somewhere too. So, so all of this stuff just fits like a glove, like everything else. All right, so I've only destroyed that, and it looks like our slot was cut too narrow, too short. See how the, the holes got it uncovered. And this top tree has been cut; doesn't have the boss on it right here. It's been shaved. It's going to take a spacer to stick out flush. 
Yeah, this tree's been modified here. And I'm not sure what we're gonna do about these stupid holes. They look like crap too, but oh well. There's always more stuff to play with. Let's see, this is on backwards. There we go. Spin that around correctly. So now we get to move up to the brake stuff, or we got to work more on the cowling and headlight up in here. It's, either way, there's a lot of work. We can at least get the front wheel in it, then we can get up on the rack, and then we can get the back wheel going in. But you know, a full day just to put on a couple fork legs and a set of handlebars. There you go. Let me said this stuff was easy. But now you see all the fun of doing it. So there we go. That's it for tonight. All right, I'm just back. I just a couple more minutes again. I was looking. I saw that the the riser was jammed completely into the upper cover here, so it wasn't working because it's supposed to be overmounted. See, like this. So that means there must be a washer that goes between that other washer and and this tree. So, because I got this dimple down, so I had to loosen these up a little bit. So now these bars actually move a little bit. See. So I have to go in the parts book and see if there's a washer goes there. Now that this came up about a sixteenth of an inch, so that would help on this very slightly because it still is way higher than what it needs to be. So this still is going to be a problem no matter what. It has to be trimmed. So I got to see what spacer is supposed to be in the factory book and determine what it is. But nothing else. I'll have to put a spacer in there. Those rubber ones in there were not enough, so we'll have to rectify that problem. Uh, we'll figure that all out. I got to pull this whole thing up to get these covers, this cover off, to get to change this piece out anyway. But anyway, just more stuff. So figuring out what we got to do. Obviously, there's a washer that's missing. But. All right, that's it. I'm not gonna worry about it anymore tonight.